Take out the papers and the trash Or you don't get no spending cash If you don't scrub that kitchen floor You ain't gonna rock and roll no more Yaggity yak Don't go back Just finish cleaning up your room Let's see that dust fly with that broom Get all that garbage out of sight Well, it's me again. It's time for our next See It video. In this video, we'll be talking about sequencing. So a sequence is a set of steps to do something. And when you write your code, you're going to be using sequences all the time. You know, today's computers seem really super smart. They can recognize our faces. They can finish our sentences. They can help us out when we're lost. You know, they can remind us when we forget things. But it isn't just the computer doing these types of things. It's the computer working with a program that somebody's written, just like programs that you're going to be writing as you go through this workbook. The important thing to remember is that when we write a program, we have to tell the computer every little thing to do, and that is what sequencing is about. So let's, um, let's look at an example. Think about if you were standing in your classroom on one edge of the classroom, and you had a friend there, and you put a blindfold around their eyes, this person's eyes, and then you told them every single step to take to get from one side of the classroom to the other. Like, you know, take two steps, turn left, take three steps, turn right, take five steps. That is a sequence of steps or actions that you're helping this friend through to get from one side of the classroom to the other. That is basically what we do when it comes to a program. Now, here are a few things to remember about the way a computer processes our code to get something done. First of all, one step at a time. Second, those steps go from the top of your code to the bottom of your code, that one step at a time. And there are only three things that break this rule that we'll be talking about later in the workbook, branches, loops, and blocks that you create on your own. Other than that, your, your programs will always uh, go from top to bottom one step at a time. And again, I just want to reiterate that we have to tell the computer exactly what to do because it doesn't know what to do without us telling it. To learn a little bit more about sequencing, let's actually write a program. So we're going to go again to scratch.mit.edu. Now, since this isn't the first time that you're going to this site, you probably should see your username right up here in the upper right corner. If you don't, there will be a sign in button that you can click there and go through the process of signing in. Let's go to create and we're going to create another program and in this case we're going to show you some sequencing. So as the editor comes up here, uh, I'm going to show you a couple more things about Scratch as well. First of all, you know, we can change the name up here. See here it says Unlimited 2. This is uh, my sequence program. You can change the name right there. The second thing is, is that you can delete the cat. I'm going to click on the cat, and up here uh, there's some scissors. And I drag the scissors down and, oops, click on the scissors, and click on the cat, and he goes away. So that allows us to come and pick something else. Let me go back and show you what I did there. I clicked on the little crazy guy with the guy with the crazy hair. And I'm going to choose this friendly little bear in this case. Okay. So again, a sequence is a set of steps. And you're going to be able to be as creative as you want to be here. Let me just show you a couple things and then I'll turn you loose. Under events, Rather than the green arrow we've been using, I'm going to use this when this sprite is clicked. And I'm going to drag that out here onto the script area. And what that means is, is the, the program that's attached here, that we're going to write here in a minute, is only going to be started or run when I click on the bear. Okay, so we have used already Things like say hello, or yeah, I think that's really the only one we've used. 
But there's so many more things you can do. And let me just show you a couple that we don't spend a lot of time with in the workbook, but you can just be really creative and on your own. The first one is we can do some motion or movement of your sprite. So if I just put this move guy here and then I click the bear, notice how he moves every time he moves. And then I can turn him and, you know, a circle is 360 degrees. And so every time that I turn him a little bit, it, he goes in a circle, turning around. And so if I want him to make a really big turn, like 180, let's see what happens there. And I click on my bear. See, he goes all the way around upside down. And if I click on him again, he comes back around because he gets another 180. Maybe let's do it instead, though, at 90, because that's like a quarter of the way around. Okay. So you have to click him a bunch of times to move. And I can put in another here to move him another 10 steps. Some other things that you might want to look at is sound. So I can play a sound. In this case, it's a plunger. <laughs> um, other things that I can do are I can, I can set here. In this case, I can play a drum. I can play a drum. What kind of drum do you want? Bongo. Um, there's a lot of other instruments. And the way that I work with those is I set the instrument. Let's say the something crazy, huh? Saxophone. And then I use this other one here to play a note. And it'll use that instrument. I could tell what note I want to play. All right, so now when I click on our bear, can you hear the bump? There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> you know, I can detach these from each other and I can drag them in the middle of, of these so that it's not all happening at exactly the same time. So, and then I could put, you know, a little thing like hello in here. So this program here is a sequence. And it's the first real sequence that we've, we've looked at. What I would suggest is that you take a little bit of time and, you know, kind of write whatever sequence you want and keep playing with it. The more you play with these things, the more you're going to learn. So I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about sequence.